Hey everybody, this is the Zero Tolerance 0640. It is the latest collaboration between Zero Tolerance Knives and Ernest Emerson, one of my all-time favorite knife designers, and uh, ZT, one of my all-time favorite production knife companies. Uh, I was very excited to hear about this release. It was kind of uh, unheralded. Uh, it wasn't announced early in the year when they announced most of their models. And I gotta say, it, it was a very welcome uh, sort of change to the 2018 sort of somnambulant uh, lineup there and I think it uh, I think it came and stirred things up at a right moment for them and I gotta say it uh, it awakened me uh, something about that split pea soup carbon fiber just uh, got my attention and then of course uh, knowing it's from Ernest Emerson I knew that uh, there was some business designed into it too this isn't just a spectacular sort of uh, regular kind of EDC looking knife. Uh, it also has some strong capabilities for um, tactical use and for hard use in terms of uh, camping, that kind of stuff. Okay, disclaimer, camping. What do I know about camping? Not very much. Uh, but I have noodled around with this knife enough to know that you can carve wood with it, and I've heard that's something you do when you camp. Uh, I've messed with the tip enough to know that you could lightly drill holes, uh, maybe making a bow drill or something like that. So, all right, there you go. That's that's the extent of my camping knowledge. So this knife, what I'm trying to get at, is just a beautiful jack-of-all-trades with a slight uh, flavoring towards the tactical. Uh, so this knife is based on the Emerson Viper, which also had a sort of very thin uh, profile, uh, different perhaps from some of the bigger, sort of chunkier sort of Emerson profiles like that uh, CQC-13. Uh, Ernie Emerson really knows and loves the Bowie knife uh, blade shape. And I think with this one, he really killed it. He got, uh, well, he killed it in a good way. I think he really found a beautiful shape, something um, Something that uses that, that downward clip, but also remains slender without getting too broad. So this knife, uh, in, in purpose, reminds me a lot of this knife. To me, this is ZT's answer to the Sabenza. And, uh, you know, I know that not all knives need to be compared to the Sabenza, but in this case, it is very similar. It's a basic design, a basic clip point design. This is a clip point. And uh, it's just built for work, but uh, sort of as a, as a sideline, it happens to be a beautiful, beautiful tool. And in hand, uh, this is the micarta version, and I'm referring to this one specifically. In hand, they have a similar feel. Uh, they're, they are square enough and flat enough not to turn in your hand but rounded enough and contoured enough with their overlays to really fill the hand out. Whoops. There's also a certain basicness of the 0640 uh, that uh, the Sabenza has in spades, and that's part of the beauty. I think that's part of what draws people to this, is the simplicity. So this, uh, for a ZT and for a an Emerson, uh, has a beautiful simplicity to it. It's on phosphor bronze washers, but it's got great action. You can even open it like a front, uh, front flipper with uh, relative ease. I've had this a few months now and it's, it's loosened up to the point where I can do that. Oh, this is an S35EN. I think I said it, it was. This is 20 CV steel, which is even, well, it's more robust. I guess it's uh, maybe a little less tough than S35EN from what I hear, but the edge holding is uh, stellar from what I hear. Again, I don't push any of my knives to uh, to the 20 CV level or even to the S35 level, uh, though I have to strop them from time to time just from use. But, you know, uh, this is more just knowing that your $240 are going towards uh, worthy materials for that price. Anyway, I have long diverted. The, all right, so this is uh, 3.7 inches, the blade. Beautifully flat ground, saber ground there. Uh, I like that you can see those grind lines or those mill lines. 
and uh, it's uh, it's two tone. You got the um, stone wash on the flats, and you got the satin on the uh, bevels. You've got the sort of traditional Ernest uh, Emerson thumb disc for opening, and then traveling down. You've got this beautiful. I mean, you might have to remove the uh, you might have to remove the thumb disc, but you have this beautiful sharpening choil here. I. <laughs> As far as choils go, I find it very attractive. I know it's a strange thing to say. Um, and then you move to the handle, and I love this handle. I love the way it feels. I love that it's thin in this dimension. It doesn't take up a lot of pocket space, but thick enough with this uh, carbon fiber to really, really fill up your hand. This jimping is, uh, though, though very minimal and just on the... Uh, tapered part of that frame is very nice and grippy without being obnoxious very nice and grippy and uh, then the uh, all the chamfering down the side just make it very very comfortable now it comes with a with a pretty busted clip it comes with this uh, the same clip that comes on the 920 which I've never been very fond of because it's super thin doesn't allow for much in the way of pants it's got like zero ramp there or I guess five percent ramp there and it's just uh, overall a pain in the ass clip. It looks all right from that side, but it's a pain in the ass from that side. So uh, this knife comes with that, and so I went and I got an, well, I didn't go anywhere. I just went on my phone and got an MXG gear uh, clip. Anything that they make for Spyderco will fit these uh, standard Emerson three-hole uh, setups there. Um, getting this MXG gear titanium clip has really, really changed the game. This it's so much more of a pleasure to carry now, and I carry it so much because it is, uh, it's a luxury item for sure, and I like to carry luxury items because I'm that kind of guy. Uh, but uh, it's it's all work, too. It doesn't really look like a luxury item. Like, say, hmm, oh, I put it away. The Wii, the Wii knife, the purple Wii knife. It just looks like a luxury item to me. This, uh, this will get your work done in style, but not too much style. I love that design shape there so uh, it locks up well disengages well fires out well it's got standoffs it's beautifully centered I don't know what else to say about this knife it's uh, it's a it's a Jim dandy all right so let me put it up against some other knives here here it is, as you saw with the Sebenza, Sebenzer. Um, let's see, here's another ZT Emerson collaboration. This is the, I can never keep these numbers straight, 630, <clears throat> based on the CQC8, the banana blade, that super cool sort of uh, curvy clip point blade. Here it is with a, uh, with the C-Ax, or I should say Sax. By Emerson, also wearing an MXG gear clip. Love that. Let's see. Oh, yes, another thumb stud clip point. There it is with the Broken River. Broken River? Twisted River? What the hell is this thing called? Yeah, Broken River. Broken. Brokeback Mountain. And here it is with the CQC-13, another classic Emerson clip point design. Oh, wait, wait, one more, one more. I love clip point Bowie blades. I love them. I have a bunch of them. So I want to show them off, and this seems to be a legitimate excuse to show them off. A real man's knife, the Hinderer XM24 with the RC Blade Works, super kick-ass aftermarket scale this thing weighs about five times this well not really but it's much heavier much bigger look at that for about the same blade look at that. now you're a man yeah this is a sweet knife but so this knife this ZT Emerson 640 uh, I think if you have any penchant towards ZT towards clip points, or if you're an Emerson fan, absolutely get it. Uh, I know some people have a problem with this uh, 
with the green carbon fiber. If you, if you notice, I haven't really spoken much about it because I think it's really cool. I love it. Hopefully I have enough light on there for you to see the color, but it's just a green and black weave and it has a sort of military feel to it, sort of a military vibe, or sort of a uh, Range Rover Jaguar uh, polo uh, in the rain kind of vibe. I mean, just depending, you know? It would be cool to get some uh, RC Blade Works uh, scales for this. I don't know if he makes scales for this, but uh, it'd be cool to get something changed out on there. But I love that shape. To quote Fletch M. Fletcher, I love that shape. All right, everybody, I have rambled long enough about this most spectacular blade, the ZT0640. All right, everybody. Go spend your hard-earned money on this one.